<laughs> the superstar, Corey. How you doing, my brother? I am amazing, Chris. How are you? I am blessed, bro. I'm super excited. I really was looking forward to this conversation because, as as you know, man, it's been a little while that we we met. A little while. I mean, literally two weeks ago, and we spoke for a couple of hours, like just meeting up there. And I'm like, yo, this is just gonna translate to having a greater conversation here. So, man, thank you for being on Friday Flow, brother. It's amazing. And uh, hi, Connor. Hi, Zara. It's nice to see some, some, some familiar faces. And Chris, I love chatting with you. I love your heart. I love what you're up to. So it's, it, it's really just, it's awesome to be with you on a Friday. Let's go. Thank you. And yes, brother, thank you for acknowledging the people that you know as well. What is up, Zara, as well. So, hey, let's just give a little you know, information on people that potentially don't know you from my community. Uh, Corey, man, I mean, from the short time that I've known him and researched him, the man's a phenomenal entrepreneur. Uh, he definitely knows the social game. And we're going to talk about some digital currency because he has something very exciting to talk about that he just started his own digital currency, if you guys could believe it or not, called Corey Coins. So we're going to dive into that. And for people who don't know me, my name is Chris Redden, and I'm a professional speaker and a peak performance coach. So Corey, Man, let's dive into it right now. Let's dive into the, first of all, I think the thing that's the most exciting or one of the top things that we're kind of talking about. Tell me how's the digital currency going? Is it officially launched? Can people buy it? What is it exactly? We'll kind of dive into that. Yeah, so we're, uh, we we pre-sold getting close to a half million dollars of token. Um, and we've got a couple of corporate ent entities wanting to buy in. But so there are so many processes, right? With registering a company overseas where you know we're 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 on we're on a beautiful island right and um there's a lot to deal with um how you exchange money at this phase and so we're talking to some of the exchanges we're getting set up with digital wallets and we've now got the white paper out on the web page and i say this um very solemnly a lot of our developers both for the web and the technology are in india and i'm sure everybody watching this right now is aware of what's going on in India. Yeah. All of them are losing family. All of them are losing. I mean, we've literally have, had people in, in a couple of my companies lose spouses, lose children, lose parents. And so, first of all, you know, as much love and prayer and anything we can do, I'm trying to put together some resources to send out to India. But so we had anticipated launching the new website about a week ago. Um, at the moment, we, we understand that there are some things that are more important on the on the website side of things. And so hard stop, we're not, we're not even reaching out to them other than to see how they're doing or what they need. But with that said, on our very old school looking website that hasn't been updated yet, we've got the white paper there with what we're doing. Um, and so the, the company itself is called Information, INF, the number four, and then Mation. And I've joined them not only as an investor, an advisor, shareholder, but also as the global general manager of that entire concept. And I don't need to geek out too much on cryptocurrency, but for, um, for the people that don't know a lot about it, basically one of the things that makes it um, really cool is that it is finite, right? So you can't just continue to create coins. They're finite amounts. So with Bitcoin, they minted almost 20 billion Bitcoins, and that's all there are in the world, right? So um, it's very proportionate. The amount of money that comes in as people buy them, that inflates the value of these coins, and some of them are utility-backed. Well, what we've done with information is we minted 10 billion coins total and some, some cryptocurrencies coming out. We're, we're all on blockchain. We're all on the Ethereum or Polkadot infrastructure, right? Um, but some of them are utility backed and we are one of the utility backed tokens as well of information. And as the name may um, indicate, we're backed by information. And so we're a data and data privacy company. People can access their own data through our app. And if they want it private, we privatize it for them. If they want it to be sold and monetized, they actually enjoy the upside so that anyone can make money off their own data that they generated if they want to. Hey, Emmanuel. Um, and so that's, that's one of the things that's cool. People don't need to be bought into our crypto to get money for their data, to keep their data secure. We've built some really cool technology around that and it ties into the Salesforce architecture but so if you go to information.com, you'll see the site, you'll see the white paper. Um, I'm not sure if our amazing team has got my smiling face on there yet. Uh, but they just made an announcement on social media about me the other day. But so we're taking a substantial portion of all the information tokens 
and we are launching those as Corey coin. And so those will be, and we'll get into this in a second, but those will be a, an in-game currency for the recruiting and social media growth game that we're building at Corey connects and the games in development. It's looking amazing. Um, but, and there's actually an NFT element. So it's a digital badge that comes with all those information coins that people get when they're into the Corey coin. And there'll be value that comes with those NFTs as well. So, I know I just said a lot. I'll shut up because <laughs> I, you're, you're the host and I haven't let you say more than 10 words. Bro, first of all, bro, listen, you were dropping some gems. I was just like, okay, cool. Like, like remembering things I'm like, okay, let's unpack this. Let's unpack that. So beautiful, brother. Like, it was great. And there's a couple of things that I want to unpack. First and foremost, you highlighted something that I think just like the most important things, man, our thoughts, our prayer with everybody that's in India, everybody that's dealing with uh, COVID-19 and everything that's going on with them. I, I thoroughly understand that. So I do understand the kind of, uh, that, that business side of things of what's happening there. But like you said, humanity comes before business all the time. So I love that approach over there. So thank you for highlighting that. And the second thing that you mentioned, I just want to clarify, because it was so, I think the main reason digital currency, Bitcoin, Corey coin, whatever, really has a chance to become an actual currency that will be for the future in such a high level is because it's not a fiat currency, which is what you explained. Essentially, a fiat currency is a currency that's not backed by anything. And the best way I could explain it back in the day, Corey, like you know, one dollar was equivalent to one uh, gold coin, right? And if the backing was a gold coin, gold is something that we can't reproduce. It's a fine amount amount. Towards nowadays, money doesn't have a backing. So the governments, the associations, the, the, the federal foundations and all that stuff could reproduce a lot of it, which creates in hyperinflation. Towards what you're saying right now with a Corey coin and any type of digital currency, there's a fine mind and amount of it. So it doesn't create a hyperinflation. So the value in itself is always going to be there. Is that correct with that assessment of what's happening with, with beautiful? Okay, so we got that aspect done. And as well, all the things that you said, uh, guys, we're going to link it down. So when he was talking about the website, it will be in the link over here. So you guys will have access to it. I'll, I'll ask Corey, obviously, to send it to me more specifically. So we'll have that uh, rolling. So that is amazing, Corey. So what I understand, the launch hasn't yet been done, but it is coming, right? The launch date? So we're we're now, in, and through the, the site, we are accepting pre, pre-launch pre sales. So that's what we've done about, a, about half a million in so far. Um, and those are coming at a discount as well. But even when they launch, and Chris, you're good, I know you're, you're going to be looking at this first round as well at that still big discount. That's coming as soon as we can make it official. It's believe okay. it or not. Um, and uh, I'm seeing some great comments. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Um, but so the, the one thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is we don't want to pre-sell physical tokens. So the, the actual digital tokens until we can do that legally. Um, and that's, Right, even though it's still somewhat deregulated, we have to make sure everything is aligned with the SEC okay, okay. and a number of other things. So, yeah, and it's because blockchain is so transparent, which we love, and why why it is so immutable. But because it's so transparent, um, I just actually was told, not kidding, like three minutes before you and I started this, I was told that even as an investor and even as a shareholder, I I'm not going to get my digital coins, even not the Corey coins, but even just my initial uh, sum of coins. Um, for they, they won't be actually in my digital wallet starting for a full year. Now that's, wow. you know, now people buying in and I'll be able to put more of my own money in to buy the actual coins as soon as they release. But here, put it this way. I can't even buy coins right now. And I'm okay. a global general okay. manager. So yeah, there's some nuance there. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm going to ask you one thing I feel like on this, uh, coin aspect or the, the digital, uh, currency right here before we move on, cause there's so many things I want to unpack and I want to be respectful with your time is what would you say to the people that are currently not investing in digital currency? Uh, would you invite them to do so? Do you think that there's some value within this? Do you think there's still time? Do you think it's a phase? Like, I, what is your ideology on that approach? And I pretty much have an idea what you're going to say, but what would you speak to the people that are saying, this is just an online thing uh, that's probably not going to succeed? What would you speak to those people? Well, at first, I just want to say hey to Marciano as well. Marc, I'm glad you, you're joining today. Um, and we're, we're talking about Corey Coin information, which is one of my, my ventures. And so interestingly, I was one of those guys where I, I didn't understand or trust crypto until very recently. And believe it or not, about four years ago, I was offered uh, to take a $50,000 investment into my first startup shed. Well, it's now raised a couple million dollars in U.S. currency. See, but back then, and this is when we had only... I put in my own money and probably I think raised the same amount 
50,000 USD. Someone was going to put 50,000 in Bitcoin into the company. I said, no, right? I thought I needed dollars to get people from Fiverr and all these things. That 50,000 in Bitcoin, I think it was about $7,000 a coin back then, right? So that okay. would have been, was eight times, that would have been like $4 million um, in, in today's dollar. So, wow. it, you know, it's one of those things where um, that's how opposed to it I was. And even until fairly recently, I wasn't that into crypto. And I was starting to have people come to me because I was learning about blockchain and smart contracts and some of those things, because I do believe the blockchain will revolutionize every industry from, you know, food distribution to the definance, uh, right? Like not having to need banks anymore. And I, I see one of the huge implications being in learning is, so I, I wasn't really into the crypto specifically and then I saw it had to have been just about a month ago. And literally, I was being brought into some of these ventures as a consultant already, but more for the growth stuff that I do, getting all the millions of views on social media. And so I was starting to see the world. And I saw on Twitter, Elon Musk tweeted about a coin I'd seen as like a joke coin for years called Dogecoin. And I saw him tweet about it. And I said, that's really odd. I need to go buy some. Right? Like if Elon Musk is tweeting about this coin and it was like five cents a coin, so I went and I bought a couple hundred dollars of it and, it and it went up pretty quickly. So that's fun. So I, I bought some more and I just kind of kept buying more and more Dogecoin. And that, that particular holding for me has done pretty well. So far I'm holding on to all of it. So I haven't cast anything in. Uh, but then I started understanding like why people get excited on certain tokens. And now I'm like all in. I'm, I'm holding some Polkadot. I'm holding Aave. I'm holding a little bit of Bitcoin, right? Just because I think that will become 100K and then, and then better token. And so, right, even just a couple hundred bucks into it right now can make a little money. Uh, what else am I into though? I, I'm holding some Cardona um, or Cardon, Cardano, um, which was just announced yesterday by the uh, uh, the Ethiopian government as being the, the blockchain that they're adapting for all their financial currency. Um, mm -hmm. So that one's about to, to go way up. I think it's a dollar thirty a coin right now. That'll probably be a ten dollar token soon. But so just studying the different coins, what's behind them, and you know more than hype, more than just memes, right? And even with Dogecoin, there's there's a lot of um, legitimate reasons at this point to believe that that could become a global currency. And like the Dalek Mavericks accept that currency at their their shops now. We've got Mark Cuban tweeting about it, and he just went on Ellen talk about Dogecoin the other day. Um, so someone asked what, where I'm invested. Yeah, oh, hi, 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 Nin. Nice to see you, Nineveh. Um, so for me right now, I'm just using Uphold to buy crypto. Um, and then I just move it into a MetaMask wallet. Um, thanks, Marciano. Um, I'm, I'm just putting, putting them into an actual digital wallet as well. Um, and, and I'm still learning some of that, but I'm excited to hear what other people are doing as well. So I, I, I love that approach. And what you just said over there, that like the, the blockchain, it really is something that's not only going to revolutionize the digital industry over here when it comes to uh, coins and so on and so forth, but there's so much more uh, accessibility and things that we could do with this blockchain. So that is so interesting. And thank you for sharing all that. And like you said, if you follow what the big people are doing or they're tweeting about it, hey, maybe there's something that to look into it. Even like you said, the Dogecoin and all that that you thought in the beginning might be a bit more of a joke. But hey, if Elon Musk is saying something, there must be something interesting over there. So that that is amazing, Corey. And Let's transition into the entrepreneur side of your of your world. And like I said, like I, I know that you've started a very successful company, which if I understand correctly, it's a company that helps uh, companies that have employees schedule their uh, scheduling employees better. And if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, you did say that you, you guys uh, give your services to uh, a hamburger company in the States, which, uh, uh, what, what was it? I'm, I'm like uh, getting a blank. And so yeah, one of our flagship clients is Wendy's. They use us on the East Coast to stay compliant. Yeah, we've got some other fun brands that use us in a number of industries. And that company I started five years ago, but since then I've started a few others. Corey Connects is a big one and I've got the podcast. We've got the growth bot there. We've got the community that we've built, but we're also building the game and that's, that's intrinsically involved with the information token. Uh, but I've also been mentoring startups through Founder Institute for a few years. So two years ago, I was their mentor of the year and their mentor of ex in excellence and got that as well last year. And so this year they asked me to join as a managing director. And so I've joined this, uh, the Midwest Founder Institute as the co-managing director. And 
We've got about 30 startups in this cohort, but all in, I've helped launch about 100 companies through there, raise, raise some millions of dollars for those ventures. Most are still in business, quite a few are generating revenue. So that's something I'm really passionate about. And then I help turn people into LinkedIn superstars. I've been doing that for a couple, you know, year, okay. year or so now. Okay, so there's a couple of things to unpack before we get into LinkedIn. So like you said, you have some experience in, with a lot of experience in entrepreneurship. And I know I have a very big following in entrepreneurship and people that are interested in starting businesses. What are the top, like three things that you would say an entrepreneur needs to know before starting a business, before maybe you're raising capital? What are like the top three things that you look at before going into certain ventures? So nobody invests in companies as early as people want their companies invested in. So I tell people to just stop, stop trying to raise money. You're wasting time. You're making decks. You're, you're trying to sell an idea and a prayer and people don't really do that. So it's all about building product. Now there's no load, no code and low code ways to build product. And there are even free ways like Adobe XD to prototype and build some mockups beyond wireframes. But really the way that I tell people to do it is actually build, get out there. If, if you don't have the skills, find the team, get on YouTube, read some books. You know, I'm five years into this and I'm still reading every day right now. I'm reading Peter Thiel's uh, Zero to One. That book's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the first book that really got me going was The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. That book was a life changer. Uh, another one that changed my career substantially and helped put me on the on the path to thought leadership and influence that I now have was uh it was called Traction by Gabriel Weinberg. That book was amazing. So as cavalier as, as it sounds, I think reading a lot of books, not trying to raise money before you're actually proven in the market, right? Is there a product market fit? Is there adoption? Have you figured out customer acquisition? Like these are all really big deals that you need to figure out before you raise money, but everybody wants to raise money beforehand. And that can become problematic. And the last thing I'd say is you just have to be scrappy. You have to understand that most things are available without money. Right. I traded a lot of my growth coaching um, to get stuff that would have cost me money. Otherwise, I, I stayed up until two, three in the morning building business model canvases and business models for other entrepreneurs while I was still bootstrapping Shedwell. Right. Like it's you have to get creative. You know, people that want to still have their family life and their social life and, you know, have time for, for yoga and all that. I mean, it's really challenging to have a balance as an early entrepreneur. But if you're strategic, the way you set it up is so that those those crazy, you know, 22 hour days and things like that don't last long. And it's crazy at this point, I think I'm involved in 30 ventures right now, either as an advisor, a paid consultant, or as a founder and executive. I have more free time now than I ever did, right? Because I've learned how to delegate. I have people that are doing a lot of the things that I used to have to do all of, um, but I wouldn't have gotten to that point if I hadn't, you know, put in those crazy hours and stuff on the front end, so. I love that. I love that. So let's do a recap because you mentioned some top things over there. First and foremost, when you're starting off your business, first of all, understand what is your what, what is your why, actually understand what is the value within the marketplace before you go actually raise money. So that's the first thing you said. Second thing you mentioned as well is get knowledge, reading books, which I am such a fan of, as you know, uh, Corey, as well, I read like intensely and the knowledge you gain and you drop some great insight on some business books that can change your life and that has changed your life. So that's the second thing. And third thing, Put in the work essentially, but put in the work with some balance, especially understanding where you are within your journey. Like you said, like in the beginning, if you're starting a new startup, you're gonna probably put in a lot more hours than where you are in a more comfortable position that you could have a better balance, but always be aware of that balance aspect because you don't wanna have this just working, no family up or whatever the case is. You wanna have a certain balance, which is only gonna help you out within your business. So thank you for that, Corey. And let me go ahead and like ask you about like LinkedIn because you did mention it and if people don't know, Corey has over 170K followers on LinkedIn and he is definitely a coach on that. He has clients that he helps uh, get to the next level. What value do you see with people gaining a, fo a followership on LinkedIn and how did you grow your followership from zero obviously to now having 100K plus followers on LinkedIn? So I, I grew with my dear, dear friend, John Greedy, that just joined as well. Hi, John Greedy. But no, it's been fun. I've been active on the platform for almost three years. I have almost 300,000 followers there. So the growth's been really astronomic. And then I'm pushing 50 million views, targeted views. And some of those posts have made me a fair amount of money. But they've also opened doors to um, relationships with some, some known billionaires, some executives at some of the Fortune 50 that I'm trying to sell into. So there's nothing that's not possible on LinkedIn. 
if you just put yourself out there authentically, transparently, and are there to simply, you know, network. And I, I'm really sick of the term add value. Everyone says they're there to add value. It's impossible to just blanket add value to the world every day in every way. But the people that are showing up there to just be part of what's going on there, which is people are looking for jobs, people are looking to place candidates, and people are looking to sell stuff. So the people that are showing up in the right places in the right way on LinkedIn, helping people sell stuff, find jobs, or find candidates, becoming part of that um, community where, where there are you know millions upon millions of views daily on that platform. And there are people that have really figured out how to, you know, kind of work with the algorithm and the computer science, such as myself and, and what I work with some of my clients with is just how, how do you take what works on LinkedIn? How do you make it strategically and deliberately effective to get in front of the right eyeballs? And at the end of the day, everything that I do and everything that I teach to be done on LinkedIn is about getting inbound conversations, right? So no more sending connection requests, no more sending in mails or emails, no more um, propositioning or soliciting or pitching, right? If you have a profile that's been optimized and if you have content that gets the right people only to your profile, they're going to see what you do and they'll reach out to you because they'll want to buy what it is you're selling. So to me, there's nothing more powerful than LinkedIn. Okay. I, there's a couple of things that you just said. I love, first of all, sorry, I said 150, but you said, Oh, you have over 300 something K followers. So that's amazing. Let me just do that correction over there. Second thing you mentioned on the added value aspect, and I'm going to give you a bit of pushback here because I'm pretty sure we're talking about the same thing, but I thoroughly believe and everything that I do is towards, I do want to add value. And now you said that it's kind of, maybe overused. And I do agree with that. It is, it can be overused, but isn't what you're doing right now towards adding a post towards doing whatever you're doing. Isn't that you Corey adding value in an authentic, clear way? Isn't that in a correlation to that? So not really. And I'd make a big point of distinction. So my, my company is called Corey connects. And what I seek to do day in and day out is connect people, thoughts, ideas, and opportunities around the world. So quite often, if I connect people to the right person or to the right opportunity, there will be value that can be uncovered, recovered, um, or leveraged from those connections. But really, I, I move really fast. And it's so many people tell me they want to add value to my life. And it's a three minute video telling me how I should eat better, sleep better. That's not okay. adding, right? Okay. Okay. So okay, that's the distinction. The distinction was you're getting people or somebody's connecting on LinkedIn. Hey, let me add value. No, that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about is like, because what I was seeing is like, I've seen your LinkedIn, I, I dived into it. everything you post, there is a value that you're adding. That's what we're talking about, right? So it's the correlation between if you're DMing somebody on LinkedIn, which it could be very annoying, I'm gonna be very frank, like it gets freaking intense sometimes. I'm like, hey, let me add value. You're like, bro, are you really adding value or not? The only way you actually add value is like you said, doing what you're doing and then getting inbounding information or inbound interest from after you putting value in the marketplace, which is what you're doing, right? So when we're talking about well, value, Chris, is the post that you're putting. We're saying, you're, you're right, we're saying the exact same thing. Okay, and I just cool. want to shout out Trevor that just joined us. Trevor Maloney is a friend of mine. He's killing it on LinkedIn too. Good to see Trevor. But yeah, Let's I think go. so many people say that they're adding value. And it's like, don't tell me you're adding value. Just add value. I'll let you know if you're adding value because I'll be showing up. Go. I'll be engaging. I'll be doing business with you. I'll be there you go. And, and I'll actually be connecting dots. But I have to say, I probably see hundreds of people a day on LinkedIn saying they're just there to add value. And it's like in the time that you just told me that you're there to, to add value and wasted my time and have me trying to wonder what that means. You could have actually done whatever it is that was valuable. So yeah, I show up. I want to make people I, laugh, okay. think I want to connect people. And to me, I consider that value. That's why I yes. add it, but I leave it up to my network to, to determine. And it's right. I think yes. at this point, I'm still getting 10,000 people following my account monthly. I'm getting over a, a million views on the platform every month there. So I think my audience has responded that they do find what I do valuable. So yeah, we are totally saying the same thing. And I just saw okay. that Sarah joined. Sarah is my favorite DJ in the entire world. And when the, go, when the world, thanks, Nen. Um, Sarah does, anyway, I'm glad to see so many amazing people here. Marciano, Jagridi, Trevor, but uh, Nineveh as well. But Sarah, that makes my day that you just joined. We've been talking crypto and social media growth, but now I just want to talk like amazing mashups and hip hop and summer music festivals in Chicago. That, bro, that, to take it if you want to talk about that. And awesome job as well. There's some people saying, hey, you're doing a great job uh, interacting with the audience 100%. That's something that I have to develop a bit better. Definitely learning from you, Corey, just on this. So yeah, man, thank, thank you for everybody that's here listening. So 
what do you want to talk about with that? I do know that you have some interest with that. You did say that you are somebody that kind of likes the hip hop scene and you are from Chicago. So talk to me a bit about that with the few minutes that we have left. Yeah. And I wish we had time to even get into this. This is called like Friday, Friday flow, but, um, Oh, and Alex just joined too. My goodness. We're wrapping up. This is some of my favorite people in the world are joining, but hi, Alex. Um, so I'm, I'm a freestyle rapper, hip hop artist. I have been for like 25 or more years. Um, and one of the things that kind of put me on the, the map on LinkedIn is I was one of one of four MCs that did a, a LinkedIn hip hop song called Global Cypher that's still uh, going around the platform. And we got a couple million views on that. Forbes did a, a little write up on the song that we did. Um, but so that was a lot of fun. And I used to do LinkedIn lives. I was one of the first, I think, 50 people in the world to have the access to LinkedIn live. So I used to do freestyle raps on there and let professionals in real time tell me what to rap about. And I would rap about some of that. So. So can I put you on the spot, brother? Yeah, I mean, we've literally, I, I do have a call in two minutes. So this might, maybe we need to do this another Friday, but other than that, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, the, the, the thing that I was going to do is if you wanted to rhyme anything, drop anything, spit some bars on me for legit the next two minutes, then we'll jump off. It's all yours. If not, we'll schedule another time to do this. What, what I'd say is let's do that because I'd rather, I don't mind hearing a beat for the first time, but I don't want to try to find a beat and I, I can't be late for Today's one of those days where I've been 30 seconds late to every call. And when you own scheduling software companies like I do, that's the one thing you <laughs> cannot work out. do. <laughs> all right. So, brother, man, first of all, let me let me just say thank you very much for having this time. And I knew that this is what was going to happen because last time we spoke, we did exactly this as well. We just went back and forth and we could have talked for freaking days, but we had the time that we had. So let me just say thank you, my brother. And one last question I want to ask you, what can I do to support you more, Corey? Is there anything that I could do to help you within what you're uh, doing and within your community as well? So first of all, I just love who you are and what you do. But having me on today um, was a huge value add. Um, just engaging with me and putting more stuff out for me to engage with is a huge value add. You know, and then I, I know lately I always drop this. This is like my, my 90 second, like, you know, and I'm out move. Um, but if you do know anybody that is looking to grow strategically targeted and really fast on LinkedIn, send them my way. I'm always, always looking to bring 100%. more people into that fold. 100%. Okay, awesome, bro. I'll, I'll link that all in the comments down below. And for everybody that's a lot watching live, awesome job. I love you guys. And if you guys are watching this on a repeat, comment, leave us uh, some information, questions that you guys have in court, we'll go check it out. And if you're watching it on my YouTube channel afterwards as well, leave some comments. We'll come back and answer it and some likes. So once again, Corey, thank you very much. Have a blessed and grateful day. Congratulations with all your success. And I'll be definitely tuning in and checking out your stuff. And we'll continue this great, great, great collaboration, bro. Thanks so much, Christopher, and thanks to everyone that tuned in. All right. Ciao, ciao.